Remember, the goal is to understand the big picture and where to find the details in your IRO. When the time approaches for an athlete to slide down the track, they go to the start area. Officials there will inspect the athlete's sled and other equipment. When it is their turn, the athlete slides down the track, and then there is the possibility of additional inspections in the finish area before they are free to go. In this section, we will discuss what the IRO requires for inspections at the start and at the finish. Some of the details vary between natural track and artificial track, but the goals are the same, to hold a fair competition in which the athletes compete safely. To follow along in your IRO, note that for artificial track, most of the inspection rules are located in Section 5 with sleds and equipment. For natural track, note that most of the details are in Section 10 with other processes for conducting the race. In either case, the rules call for checking weights, temperatures, dimensions on the sled, the wearing of the start number bib, and the presence of safety equipment. This chart shows which inspections the IRO calls for at the start and finish areas. We will start by discussing natural track. When the athlete arrives in the start area, an official will visually check to confirm the presence of the safety equipment. That includes the gloves, the helmet, the braking shoes, and the ankle braces. If the athlete has arranged some form of attachment between themselves and the sled, that physical connection must immediately release itself in the event of a crash. For example, Velcro is permitted between the athlete and the sled. The official will also visually check for the fixation of the start number bib. Typically, the elastic bib is simply pulled over the clothing and hence is secure. But if the athlete has tucked it or taped it, then the official needs to ensure it still meets the IRO. The athlete will put the sled on the calibrated scale for an official to check the weight. If the base of the scale is small, the official may have put a piece of wood on the scale to expand the base and then used the tear function of the scale to zero out the weight. Sled weights are measured to the tenth of a kilogram. A calibrated weight of at least one kilogram must be available at the start to check the accuracy of the scale. Like many other inspections, the weight check is pass-fail, so the official is ensuring that the sled is no heavier than the weight limit. An official will also check the dimensions of the sled, typically while the sled is lying upside down on a table. To assist with the dimension measurements, an official FIL gauge is often used. The cutouts and markings on the gauge are designed to help a trained official quickly check all of the required measurements, other than the burr, using the single tool. In principle, any and all of the sled measurements can be checked. In practice, at a minimum, the hand guard height and width are checked, and the full width of the sled, along with the angle of the steels. At which point, a practiced official can quickly finish up the rest of the sled dimensions, the distance between the steels, the spacing between the runners, the bridge thickness, a visual check of the height of the front pin, and a check of the overall height of the sled. The trickiest of those measurements is the angle of the steels. It's the only measurement that's usually close, and it requires placing a gauge on the steels, something that makes the athlete very nervous as they have spent considerable time preparing the sharpness of that edge. While the angle should be checked at more than one location along each steel, it is important for the official to be extremely gentle with the steel edge while performing these measurements. An official will also check the temperature of the steels. This is done using a calibrated pyrometer, and the probe is touched gently against the side edge of the steel. Each steel is checked at two locations, generally near where the bridges attach to the runners. 
However, the temperature may be checked at any point along the steel between the bridges. For fairness, the official is consistent across all of the athlete's sleds during a run as to where the measurements are taken. Using a position chart can help with that consistency and also helps with communicating to other officials about where the measurements were taken. Temperatures are checked to the tenth of a degree Celsius. Temperature measurement values are logged. The sled's steel temperatures are compared to the most recent temperature measurement from the control steel. The control steel is a piece of metal with the contour of a runner that has been placed between a half a meter and one meter above the ground in a shaded location in the start area, beginning 30 minutes before the first athlete starts. An official must check the temperature of the control steel every 15 minutes. These temperature measurements of the control steel are all logged to a tenth of a degree Celsius, and the results posted in a place visible to anyone who is in the start area. The completed log must be signed by the official who took the measurements. The log will go to the technical delegate who includes it with the report for the race. In natural track, if the control steel measurement is negative 5 degrees Celsius or lower, then the athlete's steel measurement must be at 0 degrees Celsius or lower. Otherwise, the athlete's steel measurement may not be more than 5 degrees Celsius above the control steel's temperature. The goal here is to ensure that the steels have not been heated as hot steels have been demonstrated to allow an athlete to have a faster run. It doesn't take a butane torch to create a hot steel. It can be done as simply as having a coach open their coat and hug the sled's steels to their body heat. There is also the possibility of devious constructions embedded in the runner attached to the steel. As an official, you help ensure the fairness of the race by taking the temperature measurements and then monitoring that the steels are not heated before the athlete slides. Along the way, any violations noted during inspections must be recorded in a log. And, to reduce complexity and risk of confusion in the start area, the IRO specifies that no more than two controlled sleds may be in the start area at a time. For international competition with natural track, note that the IRO requires a second calibrated pyrometer to be available in the start area. This second pyrometer is still operated by an official or other person designated by the technical delegate, but its purpose is to be available for the athletes to check the temperature of the steels prior to their sled steels being officially temperature checked. A concerned athlete, especially if they're early, can thus have the temperature checked before potentially having an IRO violation logged against them, and then could use the extra minute or so to try and get their steel temperatures down prior to the official inspection with the official pyrometer. Because all these measurements are taken at the start, natural track does not have any scheduled inspections at the finish area. However, the IRO says that random inspections of the entire sled may be carried out at any time by the technical delegate or someone they authorize. In practice, the operational plan at international races often includes a randomization device that is set up at the finish line. Each athlete must press the button and, depending on the result, have their sled inspected in more detail. Oftentimes, that additional inspection might only be a careful measurement of the burr, which is a measurement that also requires touching the steel and whose sensitive gauge instrument requires some practice to learn to use consistently. Also, although most inspections at the finish line are done randomly, be aware that in natural track, the technical delegate is specifically entitled to inspect a sled at any time. So if the technical delegate waves the athlete over, they must present their sled for inspection. For artificial track luge, Athletes' race equipment and start number bib are checked visually, the same as in natural track. However, next, the athlete carrying their sled steps onto the scale. 
we will discuss the computation of the upper bound of acceptable total weight in a separate video module. For now, note that for doubles teams, one athlete steps on the scale with the sled and the second athlete steps on the scale without the sled. This weighing procedure is supervised by a technical delegate. Control weights of at least 20 kilograms each must be available at all locations that have a scale, at least five control weights total. In much the way that natural track has an extra pyrometer for a pre-check of the steel temperature, artificial track requires that an extra gauged scale be made available to the athletes one and a half hours before the beginning of the race for them to check weights before proceeding to the official measurement. If the race is for juniors or youth, the combination athlete and sled weight measurement may occur at the finish line if convenient for the organizer. Another notable difference with artificial track is that there are no dimension measurements of the sled at the start area other than the check for possible gaps between the runner and the steel. The sled is placed in a reclined position with no one touching or pressing the steels. A very thin gauge is used to probe along the join. If that half millimeter gauge can be inserted up to half the width of the steel, this is reported to the technical delegate and a series of extra inspections will be carried out at the finish line. If the gauge is able to completely clear the space across the steel, this is immediately logged as a violation. The temperature measurements of an athlete's steels are done similarly to natural track. The IRO says that each steel will have two temperatures sampled at freely selectable locations along the running surface and indicates that the results will be logged. The IRO for artificial track has extra information about the control steel, stating that it must be at least 20 centimeters long and must have been mounted not only in the shade, but away from drafts and at least four hours before the start of the race. The artificial track IRO does not make a pyrometer available for testing the athlete's sled before the official measurement. Instead, the artificial track IRO specifies that a second pyrometer must be dedicated to the use of taking control steel measurements and that the pyrometer should be clearly labeled to avoid mixing up which one is used for sleds and which one for the control steel. Ice, air, and max sled steel temperatures must also be logged and posted on a notice board visible to everyone. Artificial track uses the threshold of negative 4 degrees Celsius for the control steel, rather than negative 5 degrees as was used in natural track. As a result, if the control steel is at or below negative 4 degrees Celsius, the steels of the athlete's sleds may be at 1 degree Celsius. If the control steel's temperatures are higher, then the sled steel temperatures may be up to the control temperature plus 5 degrees Celsius, just as in natural track. It seems that various unfortunate experiences have caused updates to the rules over the years. There is now a rule for artificial track that all gauges may only be used by the official assigned to it and may not be given to anyone else. So, if you are assigned a temperature gauge, please keep a close eye on it. Similarly, once the official inspection process has begun in the start area, the athlete may not make any further sled preparation that would improve the gliding process or potentially invalidate measurements that have already been taken. For the finish line, the artificial track IRO defines two groups of inspections, the red inspections and the blue inspections. Red inspections involve retaking temperature measurements of the steels, taking more detailed weight checks separately of the athlete and the sled, making dimension measurements on the sled, and reinspecting the athlete's personal gear. The blue group of measurements are a detailed inspection of various dimensions on the sled including pressure measurements of different connection points on the sled, 
as well as a careful inspection of the inlay, the bridges, the steels, and the runners. When the athlete arrives in the finish area, they learn whether there will be no inspection, or the red inspection, or the blue inspection. The IRO has a detailed table which specifies for each type of race what frequency of inspections is to be performed. Some of the inspections are carried out consistently on the top 3 placing or top 10 placing athletes, but most of the inspections are random. Note that the technical delegate is entitled to specify additional random inspections on the various athletes, and the type and extent of those inspections are up to the technical delegate. The artificial track IRO does not specifically say that the technical delegate may inspect any sled at any time, outside of random conditions. But athletes should assume that the technical delegate will do so according to their judgment. Artificial track officials also have a set of gauges to assist with taking the dimension measurements. The IRO specifies, for example, that certain measurements must be taken at right angles to the ground and that certain measurements have to be true over a span of, say, 200 millimeters. Various gauges like these assist the officials in quickly making the necessary measurements. This more complex Yankee gauge is designed to check all of the dimensional measurements in one pass without having to touch the sled. You can expect to coordinate with your start or finish leader as to what gauges will be in use at your assigned location.